All right, so in today's episode, we're going to be talking about doing a boot mod stage two to the F30. So come, come a bit closer. So why would you want to do that? Well, if you want to go, you know, do some do some full pulls and chop anything else, um, it's a great option to you know to do to, to do it to your car. Yeah, I know it's been a long day. <laughs> so so boot mod is a it's a reflash software. As in, you buy the license and then you can then flash your car. It's not like a JB4 or a G-Power unit, which is a natural piggyback. Um, this uses the OEM ECU with all the OEM sensors and then does its little thing, essentially. So, this car is boot mod stage two. So, the things you're gonna need are, you're gonna need a some sort of intake. We've got a in-gen technology. Realistically, you don't need one, but the brochure says you need to, and we'll just go with that. Um, something else that's recommended is you do charge pipes. So on this car here we've got some... Oh, they are actually metal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, some metal charge pipes, or at least stronger ones than standard. Most of the ones that you can buy are metal. This one's actually um, powder coated in black because it's better for heat management. Long story, just believe it. Something else you're going to need is a downpipe. You don't really need it, but you should really be, you know, you should put a downpipe on your car um, if, you, if, yeah, if you're going to be doing a stage two tune. So you can buy a catted downpipe or a non-catted one. This car does actually have a catted downpipe, but the cat that's in it is so small, it's like it's not there. Um, so downpipe tune and charge pipes, and then you're going to need a laptop to tune your car. So otherwise, that's all we need to do under here. So here's the fun bit. We're gonna be tuning the car. So what you're gonna need is open up boot mod. We've got it open up here, the website. There's also an application, but just stay tuned. Something else you'll need is a, if your laptop does not have an ethernet port on it, you can buy this ethernet like adapter. And so then this plugs into your normal USB port. The reason why you need Ethernet is because of the high the da data transferring rate, I believe it is. Um, so it takes about, what, a minute to flash at most. It's really, really quick. So get yourself one of these. And so we'll do it, we'll do it live. Yeah, make sure the car's off by the way. And pl plug it into your OBD2 port. So, open up the, uh, the agent, the boot mod agent. So the agent, the boot mod agent is finally up. Just have to, just have to do a quick update. All right, change of plans. We're gonna be doing stage two. So required hardware, they think, is a high flow down pipe. I've got that. They also reckon you need a front end intercooler and they're probably right, but we don't have one. Um, so it does boost changes and ignition advance according to what they reckon. Um, yeah, so again, um, I'm not sure if it came through before. Uh, close your door, plug your seatbelt in, uh, ignition on, and then hit flash. Press here to flash now. Sure, why not? Battery charge is highly recommended. And then it says do this and that. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Flash it. Down, downloads the file. Stage two, 93 octane off the shelf pop tune, lol. So 93 octane is for like the US fuel grade. So their 93 is like our 98, so don't be <clears throat> too worried about that. Waiting. <clears throat> And so your car will do all sorts of funny things. Don't be too worried about it as long as they sort of go away eventually. And so you'll, yeah, so this is the thing with the ethernet cable, it's so quick. Wow, unbelievable. So, it's 
starts, which is always a good sign. And so we're essentially done with this. Yep. All right, so we're so we're on the road, and we'll do some data logging to show you what what the boot mode does. So just show the screen. So I'll go six gear, just floor it. Look at the look at the peak boost. So that was what was that twenty one or something? It's like eighteen. Oh, okay, that's that's not very good. Well, okay, well it normally goes to about twenty one. We'll just try. You go from like third or something. Just just second gear. So two thousand RPM. It was like 21. 21? Yep. Yeah, right, so that's that's 21 PSI. That's a lot more than standard, like standard there are about eight. And so we're at 21. So yeah, definitely it definitely does change a few things. Um, it is it is quite a bit faster, that being said as well. Um, we'll just do a quick quick pull here. Just just, just get a speedo shot. Yeah, we'll do like a north to 100 maybe at a later stage with like the stock tune and then compare it to this one. But yeah, this is quite a lot faster. Um, stock 320s are pretty gutless. Like you don't really know like, like you, like normally if you're, if you floor it, you don't know, you like, like you sort of don't know if you're floored or not. It's that slow, there's that small of an increase. It's not, it's not really that bad, but point being that sort of like a nowhere sort of car, but um, that's okay because boot mods here to save the day. So, yeah, yeah, cut there. So, the way our drives, the drive's exactly the same, especially in like comfort, eco mode and sport mode. The only difference is, is that, um, well, all of the drive modes are exactly the same in terms of how the car reacts. It's just that when you, when you put your foot down, there's just a lot more there. So, standards 8 PSI, we're running 21. I think it peaked at 22 once. So, you can write that on the forums and tell everyone and, be, and you'll get heaps of upvotes. Um, but um, yeah, so we'll just we'll just sort of ease into it here. So we're so we'll go in sports plus, and then just nail it. So it's much quicker in terms of lag. There's still lag, and it's at the same point. So we're getting boosted about 2,000. It's about 1,800. So it's it's just under two grand. Um, and but when it kicks in, it kicks in a lot harder. The boost, obviously, because it's running almost three times the boost. So go, so go and figure that one out. But otherwise, it's much, much quicker. Um, but um, after about five-ish, it's sort of like you sort of feel the power plateau off. It doesn't really seem like it. <coughs> excuse me. Like it adds any more. And then about five and a half, six there. Well, it's more around six hours. It sort of starts to die off. So I've just been short shifting this thing at about five, five to five and a half-ish. And that's sort of where it seems about happy, but overall, I definitely recommend getting some sort of module. There's the JB4, which is actually a piggyback, which is not a reflash. There's a G Power, which is again, it's a piggyback, it's not a reflash. Uh, boot mod's really good um, in regards to it, just uses the, the car's, it just harnesses the car's like system and its sensors and all the, and all, and all the hardware that's already there. And so it ends up being an easier install because because with the JB4 you have to go and plug into all these different things. I believe it's the intake intake manifold map sensor, the Vanos position sensor, as well as the back of the fuel rail. Um, so it just monitors the fuel pressure and it adjusts accordingly. So the J so the JB4 is probably the most difficult to install, which is not that hard to do. Um, same with the G Power unit, but. These what these reflash modules, these, these sorry, these these reflash programs that you can buy. That's what I'd probably do. Um, over, like overall, I'd recommend it, and you should do it to your car. But just be wary of things like warranty and other things breaking from making a lot more boost. So again, so on this, I'm making 21 psi, which I calculate to be about 200 kilowatts. Standard these are. I believe they're 135 kilowatts, so that's a big increase, as well as there's options to do like E85 or like an E50 mix, like 50% E85, not like, yeah, you know, yeah. Um, you know what I mean by that. And um, so, so yeah, overall, you should do it. It's filthy. Uh, 
Just get that in there. MC Garage, over and out.